what is the most prevalent piece of golfing advice given from one player to another? Keep your head down, keep your eye on the ball. Yeah, yeah. Just completely wrong. Yikes. So I've been doing all my swings entirely wrong this time. <laughs> what is up, YouTube? Another day grinding here on this channel, trying to get a scratch golf. Today we got another good one, another great lesson from the coach that I hired and partnering with to get me to that goal, Mike Woodruff. And today we are focused on two great things. One is essentially how to rotate and move your body right at impact in order to get a more consistent shot. And then two, how your follow through should look like at the end. And he compares it to amazing pros in the process in order to show you what's correct. So without further ado, let's get into it. Quick question. Yes. Why did people ever advocate for that to just stay uh, your head there. Uh, well, see, a, a lot of people, when they come back, they stand up and then they miss the ground. Yeah. So they think, oh, well, if you tell that person to stay down, they'll maintain their spine angle, but now you can't really turn all the way through. So you're gonna stay at this angle till you get here, and then it's gonna pull you up and out of there. We're gonna do two things a day. First of all, we're gonna talk about timing. People talk a lot about it, but they don't understand it very well. And then we're gonna talk about the finish of the swing. It's not just cosmetic, it actually is very functional. To give you a feel for how timing is supposed to work, if you snap someone with a towel, your hand is actually coming back when it goes fastest, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. So what that means for golf is that handle speed and club head speed are inversely proportional at impact. Okay. So what is happening to a, a strong guy like you is you're trying to make your hands go fast and that's actually slowing the club down. You need to know what it feels like to slow the hands down to crack the whip and make it go fast. Please notice that the leading edge of the club is pointing at the tip of my toe in the middle of my right foot. Now, watch my shoulders. They're not going to go anywhere. And when I get to here, my shoulders are going to stop and the club is going to whip by. Mm -hmm. So because of that whipping action, I'm going to get some speed, but I'm going to get closure too. So when I hit a shot that way, it's going to want to hook. Here we go. See that one? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Now your job here is to trust that the whip gives you both things. It gives you power, but it also gives you closure. It's gonna wanna close as it goes by you. Yeah. This is important to understand, okay? It's a go, stop, go. Yeah. See, if you take your body weight and you move it forward, then you put energy into the system. Sure. If you keep going, all the energy stays in you. So you have to hit the brakes enough to let the club get all the energy and whip it by. See, so, so that's why you gotta understand that once you put the energy in the system, then you, to extract it, you have to be able to, to whip the right way. And then it's gonna go by. But see, what you cannot do is you cannot be sliding forward and keep moving. If you keep moving with this, then the club's never gonna catch up the right way all the time. Got it. So you gotta get to the point where, boom, you're back there and you just can't go any farther. There's gonna be a time where your shoulders are still pointing to the right and boom, you're already to the left there. So it's gonna be a real fast little motion and then whoop, you can whip it and you can start to the right of the target. If you get fooled into pulling all the way around here, then the whip's not gonna happen at the right time nor in the right direction when Got you do it. it. Okay. If you go back to standard, you'll still be able to hook it, won't you? <laughs> <laughs> really no question, really no question. Okay, 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 okay. No. no, big slice, okay. <laughs> big slice. Okay, so you didn't hit the brakes, so you hit, didn't have the whip, you just kept going, and that's what let it stay behind. So go is important. Find a soft chair or a sofa at the house, really, yeah. and where you got the back of the, 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 the backrest there, and just go forward and watch how natural it is when you go forward with the right side of you to have the left hip go back perfectly. Yeah. But if you get to the top and you think, okay, I'm gonna get my hips moving, not so good. Okay, that okay. makes way more okay. sense. Okay, very good. Okay. Yep. okay, now the first thing you need to know about this is that the human spine is designed either to bend or to twist, but not to do both at the same time. Mm -hmm. If you try to do both at the same time, you do neither one very completely. When we watch good players, what we notice about them is they have lots and lots and lots of twist. So the implication there is they must have gotten rid of the bend that they had earlier. Mm -hmm. So the amount of bending over that's correct to have at address, correct during the backswing, downswing, and correct at impact is horribly, terribly wrong if you stay down and watch the ball. Oh, Yet really? what is the most prevalent piece of golfing advice given from one player to another? Keep your head down, keep your eye on the ball, yeah, yeah. just completely wrong. 
Now, people aren't effing with you, but they just don't understand how much power and how much speed is going to carry you through to a different place. The first major championship winner I'm going to show you is named Paul Azinger. When you look at him in this photo, okay, you can see, okay, but I want you to look for the straight line from the right shoulder down to the left foot. Thighs touching together, bounced up to the tip of the toe. Next one is Sevi Ballesteros. He won five majors. He has an almost freakishly straight looking line that's very highly prized among good golfers. But the straight line, thighs together, up to the tip of the toe. Yeah. I'm going to show you the finished drill. Okay. We're going to set up normally to the ball, and then you're not going to pull your arms up. You're going to keep them extended, but you're going to stand up just a little so the club has clearance over the top of the ball. Now we're going to do the arm swing part. I want you to pretend that the club is a sword and you're going to cut your left ear off with it and the club is going to come to rest against the back of your collar or your neck. You can neither be bent backwards nor can you be bent over. Using that as a template, we're going to hit a ball from here. To do that, I'm going to bring the arms back down against the front of the body and then I'm going to bring the club back against the ball. The moment it touches the ground, I'm going to begin a swing and go back to that same position when I'm done. Somebody offers you $1 million if this ball hooks in the air. If you don't hook it, you got to pay 1000 It's a 1000 to one shot on a grant. Would you take a bet on this shot? This is it. This is my time. Time to make my parents proud. All right, let me focus and remember everything my coach has been teaching me. I need to align myself with the ball properly, get over the ball, Twist all the way around and connect my knees together in the position right before the fall through. Got to make sure when looking down here, my hands and clubs are in the right position. All right, I think I'm good. I'm not tilted to the side, nor am I leaning backwards. Got to be completely straight and upright. Next, we are going to bring this club over my shoulder and resting on my collar. Got to make sure this is all a fluid motion. Now let's reverse the process. Bring down the club and keep it at the right position. All right, let's do this. And boom. No, oh, sorry. God. No, why didn't you just go home? That's your home. One last look at the target. As soon as you look down, you go. Not bad, pretty good, pretty good. Quick things about today. Number one, okay, if you are going to have good timing in the swing, you have to put energy in the system, and then you have to hit the brakes to whip the club by. Yeah. Next, when you do the finish, you're gonna make sure you go all the way around and go to a balanced point, but the implication there is that you're no longer bent over and you've rotated completely. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Do the drill as much as you can, but really start a few in your next practice sessions with your back facing the target, just whip it by, and watch how easy it will be to hook. If you go back to normal and you're sliding forward and you're losing the whip, go back to either completely back facing the target or 45 degrees because those restrictive positions for the lower body will prevent your body from continuing to move at a time when it already should have stopped moving. Gotcha, okay. gotcha. See, remember that your swing is a machine and these are your attachments to the machine. Yeah. Okay, so if you're making a good swing, every club's gonna go a different height and a different distance. So hit some drivers and just see. If you come back and you say, oh, this is the pattern I have with the driver, I'll explain to you why it's happening and we'll make it better right away. Mike, thanks a lot. See you next time. Good job. All right. So that's a wrap for this session. A great lesson from Mike Woodra here. Hopefully you guys learned something. And that's pretty much what you're going to get from this channel. You're going to be learning a lot from a lot of these top coaches I'm bringing on the channel. Hopefully to obviously teach me, but hopefully you guys are picking up something along the way. So that's pretty much it. And definitely drop a like if you enjoyed that lesson. Stay tuned and I will see you guys tomorrow.